Hello, my name is Max Banfield. Welcome to my talk. I'm the inventor of the world's first standing computer desk, amongst other things. I invented that desk in 1998 when there was no such thing in existence. And in recent years, I've found that there are millions of me manufactured all around the world. Nobody mentions my name and nobody's paid me royalties. So in order to deal with that issue, I've been producing pamphlets and distributing them to various people. On one occasion within the last 12 months, I received a phone call from the secretary of Tony Zappia, who is a federal member of parliament for the local district. And uh, he wanted to know if he could come to my place to have a look at my research. And of course, I was more than happy for him to do that. And when he arrived with his assistant, he spent perhaps a half an hour to three quarters of an hour looking at all my documents. Since then, I've been producing more pamphlets and distributing them in various locations uh, to make the public aware that I'm the one and only inventor of this desk. And in that process, I went to Tony Zappia's office again recently uh, with three pamphlets for him to have a look at. He wasn't there, but another one of his assistants came to the counter and I asked her to hand them on to him and she said, what are they about? So I explained uh, the details. I said, I've got three documents that I want him to see. One is from uh, 1981 uh, from the ABC radio stations who said my ideas radical and controversial. The other from 1998, when the Skeptic magazine published an article suggesting that my ideas were wrong and the previous psychiatric theories were correct. And the other one is about 2015, when the Prime Minister of Australia is describing standing this as the latest uh, and best in modern scientific innovation. So this is the first one. And I'll just read what it says. To Mr. Banfield, this is 1981. Perhaps when you have more, worked more on establishing the validity of your theory, we can talk to you again. We have listened to your tape and are unable to assess it ourselves. Might we suggest that you could submit it to someone who has had a long career of experience in this area, as I'm sure that you will understand our caution over putting a radical, controversial, but less than generally accepted theories on illnesses and their cures to the listening public. Thus suggesting that I submit the idea to someone who's had a long experience in that area. Well, that wasn't practical because what I was saying was the health problems of desk workers are caused by sitting at a desk and the people who had long experience in the area and were treating the problems were treating it as a psychological problem with medication and psychotherapy. And uh, I w it would have been difficult to get people like that to agree with me. Uh, I, they, they wanted me to understand their caution over putting radical and controversial but less than generally accepted theories on illnesses and their cures to the listening public. Now my theory then was sitting at a desk and leaning forwards, compressing the chest and abdomen to cause health problems. I said that's less than acceptable, controversial and radical. And that's the forerunner to me later developing the standing computer desk as a treatment. Um, so what was then radical is now modern mainstream practice. The next uh, pamphlet that I explained was uh, a copy of um, Skeptics magazine. And um, I'll give you a bit of background about that article. I wrote a, a theory about posture being cause of health problems in 1980, and 10 years later, I was diagnosed with cancer and given two months to live. It was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, 1993 that diagnosis was made. 1997, I was diagnosed with heart disease. That took a while to cure. 
and in 1998 I had cancer surgery and you can see a scar there and then I was followed by six months of CHOP chemotherapy and then I invented the standing computer desk and then I had more surgery on my abdomen to remove the cancerous tumour in my abdomen and then I had three months of DHAP chemotherapy and then a stem cell transplant, MAP theory chemotherapy. I'm still alive today. And the time frame is this. I wrote my first booklet on posture and health in 1994. Um, I'd already been looking at the idea of standing at a desk instead of sitting at a desk as a way of relieving the problem. It was, wasn't very effective. And when Laurie wrote this article, he was reviewing this book. By then it had reached this size, quite a few hundred pages. And as you can see, there's a man standing at a desk. And as you can also see, copyright all rights reserved for all of my books. Which means if people wanted to manage tests or do anything about this or teach anything about it, they really should mention my name by law and they really should be paying me royalties. And this is what he said about that book. <clears throat> it's a, several pages of quite trenchant criticism. He's a psychologist and I was hoping he'd give an objective view, but he's basically saying my theory of physical cause and treatment uh, was wrong and the old ideas of psychological cause and psychotherapy were correct. But this is what he says in 1990. 98, but this was published two years later, so I'll just show you that. This is another book, come later, and this is the front diagram. Uh, that's uh, the world's first standing computer desk. And if you look through some of these pages, they're all about the shape of the body and why um, I invented that desk took many years of experimentation to get it right. Um, so this is what Laurie Eddy said. The first, this, this book about the standing disc, this is about that. But the standing computer desk was invented before this was actually published two years later. And this is what it says, and I'll get my pamphlet here. It says, in that article there, that my development of the standing computer desk, my theory on the cause of health problems, almost totally rejected by modern medical authorities. And there was virtually no modern research on the subject. I was the one and only person promoting this idea when everyone else was still saying these pains are due to psychological facts such as stress and worry and the treatment was medications and psychotherapy. I was the one and only person working on this aspect of health. And the next pamphlet I showed uh, Tony's assistant was this one to show her that I had actually published that series of books. This is a pamphlet that I wrote and distributed and you can see there that the Prime Minister of Australia in 2015, 17 years after I invented it, took people to, that long to realise I was right. Nobody that meant they were wrong at the time, but 17 years later it took them to figure out I was right. And the Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull said it is the latest and the best in modern scientific innovation. And he has it in his own office as a demonstration of his pride in modern science and innovation and he's encouraging all Australians to use it and he's also seeing it as an example to encourage other Australians to be creative like me but he's not mentioning my name.
You can see they're also the President of America, Barack Obama, uh, and the committees are in introducing $700,000 worth of sit-stand desks into the White House. That's how famous my ideas has become in 17 years. And no one mentions my name. As I was talking to uh, Tony's assistant, uh, I mentioned the fact that nobody's paid me royalties. And she said, that's disgusting. Something ought to be done about it. I agreed with her. And a woman standing next to me overheard the conversation and she said, it's disgusting the way big companies just come along and steal ideas and get away with it like that. Something should be done about it. I agreed with her. Her husband was standing next to her and he agreed as well. So that's what happened when I was in Tony Zappia's office, Federal Member of Parliament. Now, I'd like to just conclude by saying uh, three things which I thought are quite curious, and most people don't put any thought into this, but there's three reactions, basic reactions I get from people. The most common reaction is this. I did 40 years of research. I've been robbed. I get 40 years of research and people say, ah, oh, forget about the past and get on with the future. You can't do anything about it. That horse has bolted. That's probably 7 out of 10 people. Now, about 2 out of 10 people say, that's disgusting. Some do ought to be done about that. They ought to be required to pay royalties or not make them. That's the second response. And the third response usually comes from people who know me and friends. And they usually say, good on you, Max. Go after the bastards and get your money. So what type of person are you? The type of person who say, oh, those desks are just desks. You can't expect to be paid for that. Get on with the future. Forget about the past. Are you the type of person who said, that's disgusting. Something ought to be done about it. Stop those people from stealing your ideas. Or are you the type of person who says, good on you, mate. Go after them and get your money. What type of person are you? Thank you for listening.